These are five things that we want to think about for ourselves and for our loved ones as we get closer to the end of life or as we're in an aging process and getting older. I learned a lot of this from Atul Gawande, who is a notable um, expert, medical doctor, and talks about death a lot um, and how to live your best life until you die. So he talks a lot about this idea of giving something up today in order for there to be extension of life tomorrow. And is that exchange worth it? So that's really one of the things that you're assessing when you're looking at whether or not to have certain medical procedures or um, to, to really engage in a medical strategy for life extension, the question is, you know, really, what are you giving up? So that's, that leads us to these five questions. The first is, um, what are you willing to sacrifice to live longer? So what is, and what are you not willing to sacrifice? So I know for a lot of people, in particular, a lot of my clients, they want to make sure that they can still communicate and interact with their family and friends. That that is the one thing that they are not willing to sacrifice is communication. Um, for other people, they want to be able to ambulate. They want to be able to walk around. They want to be able to feed themselves and engage in social uh, interaction. So it really, you know, what for you, what is it that you would be willing to sacrifice in order to be here a little bit longer? Um, and for some people, that may be a much different dynamic. It may be, look like, you know, if I can't, you know, get outside and walk my dog, my life just isn't worth living. Um, so, you know, and that, that may be an extreme example, but it does change over time what we're willing to give up. And so it's constantly something that we want to check in with ourselves. Like, what is it that I'm willing to sacrifice to continue to be here? And, and those joys may shift. Um, number two is, you know, what are my goals in life that I haven't accomplished yet? Um, if they may be like seeing a child graduate or meeting your um, great grandchild for the first time or what, you know, what is it that you really want to see happen in your life before you leave? That becomes helpful in, in going back to number one, what are we willing to sacrifice or give up? The third one is, the third one is what are your fears? What are the things that you're really afraid of? For most people, it's suffering and pain and um, leaving your familiar surroundings. So that can be a fear. And then how can we help alleviate that? And some of that may be through pain management. <clears throat> it may also be by bringing in helpers into your home to keep you in a comfortable setting. Um, or it may not. It really depends on what, what you're afraid of. So sharing your fears and being open to having people help you address those fears can be a very important question to ask and a very important question to answer. And also self-examination, like really what are your fears? And um, if they're related to like what happens when I die and fear of death, um, there are a ton of people who can talk to you about that and maybe help alleviate some of those fears. Um, the other question number four is, um, where does the scale tip? So that's an important one because we've talked about what we're willing to give up and we've talked about our fears. We've talked about our life goals, but really where is the tipping point for you? And for some people that may be. Um, you know, when I can no longer hear or see or communicate, it's okay to, you know, let me, let me die a natural death. Like, where is that tipping point for you? So knowing that and then informing others of the tipping point of, you know, like, okay, I'm no longer reaching my goals. Um, I'm no longer really, um, having that enjoyment, that thing that I really didn't want to sacrifice. And then when is it okay to start letting you kind of transition to that other place? And that may be, you know, artificial, withdrawing artificial hydration and nutrition. It may be relocating you into a, a hospice facility. It may be whatever it is, like it's important to kind of lay that out. What is the tipping point? And then I think most importantly, what does your best day look like? And that may change over time. 
but sharing with your people what an amazing day looks like to you is so important and can really help you to kind of set your set your days up so that we do as many of those things as possible and if that means just a conversation with somebody or having your puppy up on your bed or whatever it is let's make sure that your best possible day that we incorporate those things into your day as much as possible and that you tell your people look i love to be visited or i love it when you bring me my grandmother used to love um you know just a little bit of what she called black wine and it was really red wine and she had this cheese and crackers that she loved to eat so my father would bring that to her every day so incorporating those things what does your best day look like um, can be very meaningful and helpful to others to know how to serve you um, so i hope this is helpful this is five questions to ask as we're getting older and maybe nearing the end of this journey all right i'm shannon i hope everybody has a great day